I think that's important to point out that, you know, we were able to make a lot of mistakes mm. with no massive repercussions at the beginning. Like I said, it was just kind of almost like a, an ongoing fun project. That changed as we progressed through. Um, and I mean, when we started, we're working, say we worked five days a week on the business. I was working a part-time job on the weekends as well. Mm. I mean, I was still a lot easier when you're younger and, you know, so it's, it's, life's just fun in general, isn't it, Mark? Mm -hmm. yeah, you're yeah, allowed yeah. to have fun when you're in your I've heard. 20s. <laughs> I've heard, yeah. 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 Uh, the three of us back again. It's been a little while, hasn't it? Since we've all been on the podcast. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. been a little while. It's good to be back. When was the last time? Christmas? It was... It may be. It was dark. <laughs> it was no, no, it was, months. Um, yeah, we recorded some stuff uh, a couple of months ago, didn't we? It was dark, but it wasn't mm -hmm. Christmas. Um, so for this podcast, we thought would so we've taken a little bit of inspiration from a networking event that um, none of us went to. By a little bit of ago. inspiration, you mean we've directly ripped off the title? But yeah, yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was good. Fine, it's good. Um, where business owners were invited to come along and talk about some of the good experiences and bad experiences. And the name of the networking event was... Food and fuck-ups. Food and fuck-ups. There's no food here, as you can see. But there so are we... three fuck-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, see you on the next so, one. <laughs> so to avoid being sued, we've called this one Fun and Fuck-ups. <laughs> um, growing a video production agency. Um, so the idea is um, the three of us, yes, we've got roles day to day in, our, in the video production company that we run, your film. Um, but we've, all, we've got our own, you know, separate journeys as well to get there. We've been in business a long time. We're knocking on a bit now. Um, and I, I suppose for anyone watching who owns or runs a business, you'll know, like we do, that the highs can be higher than if you're working for someone else, but the lows can also be a lot lower. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we thought we'd share some stories from, from our time running a business on both ends of the spectrum. I'm sure we'll laugh at all of them, the good and the bad. <laughs> I'm sure they might lean slightly more towards one end of the spectrum, yeah? Well, the key, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it will. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, these are the experiences that have shaped and got where we are. So even the bad experiences, you know, with the, the years <coughs> to heal the scars, Mark, <laughs> are worthwhile in the end. <laughs> I think no, that's a, a, a good starting point, actually. It's uh, exactly what you said there. The, it's shaped the point that we're at now. Mm -hmm. Without those, it'd be a different journey, obviously a different result. But obviously you learn a lot more from your mistakes or your misfortunes, I think, um, in everything really in life. So. Running a business is a massive part of your life. It can overtake a lot of aspects. Um, I don't think any anyone going into setting up a business if they don't realise that they'll soon, you know, it'll still it'll soon be upon them. They'll soon notice that um, <coughs> the business is you know stopping you from sleep. It's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning when you get to a certain level. Uh, but you start off on that journey, you know, with an idea, with a dream wanting it to be fun, you know, wanting to enjoy it, um, wanting to get the most out of it, part of your life, you know, it's all, all those positive things that you start off on the journeys, you know, and little by little, maybe that positivity will be taken away from you, mm -hmm. um, which it has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it definitely until I was, another, I was just, until how long another, did that bit last? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. But I think, yeah, it does shape, yeah, it does. And then you'll, you you might get to a low point and then it's it's like business. It's that seesaw effect. It's peaks and troughs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll you'll look back at the, the hard times and um, you'll you'll aim for making it better and an improvement. I think that's the, the main thing that I've quickly learned. Yeah, you, you, you do need to um, grow a thicker skin, I think. Mm -hmm. Run the business, like I said. Yeah, the highs are great. And you could argue they're higher than if you're working for someone else and something good happens. <coughs> the other side, obviously, the lows are much lower. 
yes, there's definitely been some horrible times, some scary times where you're literally worried about, you know, the, your uh, well-being and the people that depend on you as well, financially and otherwise. Mm-hmm. So definitely um, growing a thicker skin. It's one of the two things I hear, not as much these days, but I've heard quite a lot on my business journey where I think you kind of change a little bit when you, you own a business. You're almost a little bit more reluctant to show that you're happy about something. You kind of naturally play your cards a bit closer to your chest more. Definitely have been criticised in the past for not kind of showing that I'm happy <laughs> as much. <laughs> but it's kind of, well, if I'm always wearing my heart on my sleeve, I'm going to be, you know, laughing manically on Monday and then, you know, crying my eyes out on the Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You've got to kind of level out a little bit more. You've got to kind of try and live somewhere more in the middle. The other thing I've always resented is, and again, haven't heard this for quite a long time, but people saying, oh, you're really lucky. You're so <laughs> lucky that you, that you do that. It's it's strange. Uh, the, harder, the harder I work, the more lucky I seem to get. And that's absolutely true. It's it, There's so much work goes on behind the scenes. And, you know, a lot of people that will say that to you weren't there when you were, you know, not doing so well. Um but don't worry, I've put those people right as well. <laughs> so it, it, it's it's uh, it's all worked out. Yeah. Any any general observations from you, Matthew? Because you're quite a level guy naturally, anyway, aren't you? That's so. why I'm sat in the middle here. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost track of how long it's been. It's been a long time since you get overly excited about any project. As you were talking, I was thinking about like the very first year, and um, I mean, you said starting a business takes over your life, as you know. We didn't start this business initially thinking, oh, we're going to build a business. We just thought it's a route to getting the tools that we need and resources we need to do the other stuff that we actually want to do. Hmm. But then, <clears throat> you know, didn't factor in the um, lack of time to do that for one thing. But in that first year, the first the first job we actually did, not the first one that we won, but the first one that we did, it was so easy it's obviously looking back now, like what the brief was. And I distinctly remember um, us talking about it in the living room at my parents' house and just feeling like I literally don't like, not the technical side of it, but like the the, the creative approach to it. <clears throat> don't know how to go about it. Don't know what this actually needs. And we came up with something that worked. And the pressure wasn't was off because it was literally the first thing we did and it was a, a contra deal we're doing to get some pages in a magazine you know um but i remember that but then at the same time i also remember the first year coming out of filming another job which was on paper equally easy it was just filming a Mm -hmm. filming a meeting and making a little highlights (laughs) video a a job that we've done what three times in the last month as it it goes and uh we we came out and sat in the car and like you know the bit only fools and horses when they sell the watch and the have you seen that bit before <clears throat> so the the, the roll the, the clip for anybody the, 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 else the, that the hasn't walk, seen the walk it. the walk out the auction house out of Sotheby's you know you don't know how much they've sold it for they get in the three wheel van and they're sat there and they're very calm and quiet and then uh, you know the one I forget which way around is but let's say Dell says to Rodney so so how much did it go for in the end and he pulls out and he reads out the millions that they just got for it and they just sit there and one of them goes so do you want to go first or shall I and he said. Like, Ah, I think we'll go together and then they just lose it and it cuts to the outside and the van's rocking because they're going mental over it. We did our version of that after filming that meeting that uh-huh. we talked about where like we just couldn't believe what we were going to get paid for what we'd just done. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So like that, you know, we, we definitely were learning on the job the first few years but you were already getting that kind of <laughs> moment of despair of like how do we go about this there's we know what we're doing to some degree but there's obviously gaps here because we're trying to kind of fit skills into a new thing mm-hmm. which obviously we've learned but then the elation of just like oh yeah well we just put those skills to use and look at what we're getting paid which wasn't a huge amount but relative to our age and experience at the time it was, it was great it's job. worth pointing out by the way this stage for anyone that's uh, watching or listening that doesn't know so me and Matthew founded your film in 2005 as a partnership originally. So that's around about that time, isn't it, that you're talking about uh, there? Everything I'm talking about there happened in the first 12 months, yeah. So Mark originally, well, do you want to well, give background yeah, to your, your side I of things? I was actually going to dive in there because <clears throat> it's just reminded me of my 
ask what I've did after university, working for ITV in Leeds, a year after that, went into a multimedia company. Then after that, so I was two years out of university, and then I went freelance. And then I set up my own company, got a little office, and that was fun. That actually felt fun, you know, I was like, I was doing what I wanted to do, I was trying to find, it was, it was all me generating work, and that looking back at that was that was fun. And that's when I had like my daughter came on the scene and I had a family and I was I was working for myself. And then it became a little bit of a struggle trying to find work. And then I was offered a job in a, a um up in Sunderland for um a satellite company, satellite channel. So <clears throat> I was then employed for a, a year and then the opportunity came to set up a business with a, a business partner um, to service a different channel uh, with its content. And then that became like, I you know, had like maybe six months maybe of working again. And then it was like, oh, new, set up a new business with someone and we can be creating all this content. And then that became exciting again. Um, so just with off the back of what you've said there, it's like, I suppose that's where the fun seems to have come the excitement of setting up something new and I wouldn't e even say I'd thought of having my own control it was just that seemed quite fun at the time instead of working for someone but I, I didn't mind either but looking back it it seemed quite fun and <clears throat> that company which was first 11 ran for I think maybe <coughs> five years something like that and me and my business partner parted he had different we just parted we went our separate ways and I just became freelance again and set up another business um, I think um, Digital Sidekick ran for let's say I don't know it's probably longer than I think it did you know five six seven years but then that's when kind of chance email I think it was or on LinkedIn with yourself and we started talking and then we we kept in touch for must have been two, two years at least before the idea was planted in your minds of like having an, another another business partner, if you were. Yeah, I think you <laughs> do, sort the seeds. Do you, do you really yeah. think the idea wasn't in my mind when I very first emailed you? <laughs> oh, but I think yeah, I'd got to a stage where <clears throat> fun wasn't wasn't in the makeup anymore. It was kind of like. I've been doing this for so so long. Um, it's just the norm now. It's just the norm. Yeah. Um, where do I want to be in five years' time? And there was three things. It was build up my own business with employ more people by myself. Be part of a, a bigger company and run a department. Or come on board with like-minded people and, and own a a bigger business and at one point I've said this before to you guys all three things were on the table and one by one kind of until there was one left which was obviously your your film um, once you'd exhausted all the opportunities yeah yeah, yeah. it came to the four it back. was like which one of these three will be more fun <laughs> um, but th yeah they went <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I guess third choice yeah <laughs> default um, and yeah I, 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 I've just rambled on for so long there. but that, that's kind of like yeah a, a long winded snapshot if you like <laughs> well there's a massive there's a massive difference between how you started and what we started in terms of what we needed out of the business when we started in 2005 um, I suppose we're, we're kind of in a lot of ways this is cheating a little bit I have huge respect for anybody that leaves a job to start their own business because it's a big leap mm. it's risky in its nature and um, people that have got a steady job they've got a mortgage, they've got kids or whatever um, that make that leap huge respect to them, that's not what we did, the risk was very low for us because of what age mm. Um, early 20s um, still lived with parents uh, the office that we had was Matthew's parents house back bedroom um, so no overheads no problems if we weren't making money Yeah. so we're picking a project and it was kind of like everyone everything that we won was a bonus 
and we were just seeing what happened and like Matthew said at the beginning we're young enough to think well as long as we can just you know get enough to buy the kit we need then we'll go and make our first film and then head to Hollywood mm-hmm. see you later that's, that's what the original plan was um, so yeah and I think we're more successful than we thought I mean the internet was still quite new at that point and there was a lot of ways to cheat the system that Google have kind of got rid of now mm-hmm. the idea of like link forms and stuff like that and you know just sharing like I, I, there was more you could make yourself look more legitimate by having a website you know people will, could look at that and think yeah that looks like an established responsible company that's been around for a while well certainly and our first website and anyone who cares to look at it on the way back machine will see definitely fits in the fuck up column but <laughs> uh, from Kev's perspective it worked. From Kev's perspective, he has to get the, the credit because he, he put the link on a few different websites, and there was one for um, like a it was like a website to find corporate away days and corporate activities and things like that. Mm-hmm. And within a couple of weeks of saying right, we're in business with no advertising or promotion other than these links, were first paying client found her through one of those links and booked her, mm-hmm. which is obviously a leap of faith on their part. I'm sure they were. Happy with uh, with the price, if nothing else, but yeah, luck really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but there was a lot of jobs we turned up, and I think people they didn't hide it. They just said, "Bloody hell, you, you're young." <laughs> where's Where's your jar? Do, do, you know, do, do you know what you're doing? Are you lost? We were like, <coughs> "No, nah, not really." <laughs> what are you looking for? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's important to point out that you know we were able to make a lot of mistakes mm. with no massive repercussions at the beginning. Like I said, it was just kind of almost like a, an ongoing fun project. That changed as we progressed through. Um, and I mean, when we started, we're working, say we worked five days a week on the business. I was working a part-time job on the weekends as well. Mm. I mean, it was still a lot easier when you're younger and, you know, so it's, life's just fun in general isn't it Mark yeah, you're yeah, allowed yeah. to have fun when you're in your I've heard. 20s I've heard yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah do you remember well I think I was well it was mid 20s when my daughter was born so I'd left a well paid job and went freelance and mm-hmm. set up my own business so I've never until you said that I've never really kind of I think that's the thing once you're once you're in the the flow if you like the stream of life you just deal with what's in front of you generally don't you and you don't really think back of like I I never thought I knew it was going to be maybe difficult but I suppose I was always leaving something to go to something else Mm -hmm. and I had a bit of of a safety net because I just generally worked hard anyway so if something didn't work out I was prepared to say well yeah that's fair enough I'll give it a go I'm not going to be disheartened by it I'll just literally do something else really reinvent sell your body to medical science or something bits of it yes (laughs) Well, I want to talk about one specific experience that that uh, we went through. Ooh, which, ca- fun. which categories are going to fall into? I've got three categories. I'll just it, two. It's it, it's a it's Fine. a bit of both, and it's probably the single biggest event that shaped a lot of different things in terms of me personally, probably Matthew. Um, so, I think it was two thousand seven. Um, Matthew was going to a lot of networking events, local networking events. And one of these networking events was at Tiger Tiger in Newcastle in the gate. Well, next to the gate, not there now, something else. Speed networking, to be precise. Yeah, speed networking. And the actual venue manager of the Tiger Tiger in Newcastle said, actually, um, nationally, we're trying to get more bookings when the venue quiet so basically through the day obviously they make all the money Friday and Saturday nights they're just trying to monetize the the venue a little bit more during those really quiet times Um, so maybe look at getting a video done for Tiger Tiger Newcastle to promote you know people booking the spaces out Um, so that progressed a little bit and there was a you know fairly modest budget to do that at the time huge for us though Mm -hmm. and it just kind of escalated the national market manager ended up getting involved and um, said, yeah, it's a great idea, but we need that for all the venues. At the time, there was, I think, nine different Tiger Tiger venues across the UK. Sounds about right. And, and there was... Three or four different 
brands, but same kind of places. Yeah, yeah and then there was four um, bars in central London as well that were similar, but just under a different brand name. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, the price is great. Um, can you <laughs> yeah, do it? Can it you, was. Can yeah. you do it for these, these other ones as well? So the job went from being, at the time, to us, huge to game-changing. Yeah. Um, and I think that was when we actually made the decision where the accountant advised, right, you need to scrap the partnership, become a limited company now. I think that was the yeah, trigger where, point. Yeah, where he had you know, ill-advised us in the first place, basically. Mm-hmm. Or should have yeah, been I, think the I think we'd been paying about ninety percent tax. Before <laughs> it was it was like us and footballers in the seventies <laughs> were the only two who have ever reached this level of personal tax before. <laughs> footballers and rock stars. So absolutely fantastic job, and also just where we were as a, as a as a business and where we were at that age, it was you know just a great um, experience to be able to go to all these different places. It, there was the venues in Scotland. Then there's, the, you know, as far south as like Portsmouth, I think. Um, was there one in Wales? Yeah, Cardiff. Mm-hmm. Cardiff, where I met me Welsh dad doppelganger. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, quite a few in central London. So in London for, for quite a little while, <laughs> kind of getting all these uh, venues filmed. Where I did a personal fuck up. Because <laughs> we went in in the mornings, filmed the empty spaces, and then waited until people started coming in on the evening to film them full. So we always had this big downtime in the middle. And I forget which one it was. It was it was one of the other branded bars. And it was in, it was probably like in the square mile. It was it was in the middle of very expensive London. And I was desperate for a haircut. And I went in and, and I just never even thought. <laughs> this is 2007. Oh. Uh, you know. <laughs> it was, I sat you had to pay four pounds for a haircut. He's halfway through this haircut. And I noticed the sign that says, you know, all gents haircuts, 35 quid. And I was like, <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember that one. Um, so Good yeah, echo, though. we ended up filming all the different venues. So we were, you know, at their behest in terms of their best availability. So they were kind of dotted around about a nine month period, I think, it took to get all of them filmed. I think it was short on that. I think it was kind of like over the summer. It was, it was probably about three or four months all in. So here's the, the mistake we made. All we were focused on was, okay, so we'll do this job. And, um, you know, and then there's, we get this huge check at the end of it. Never at any point said, should we ask for a deposit? Mm-hmm. Should we ask for interim payments? Should we look at like how long that job's going to take? When the editing's going to happen? Just did no scheduling other than, right, we need to be in London on Friday, so we need to drive on Thursday. <laughs> that was about the sum total of it. And, you know, what would, it felt like probably longer than it was, but it was... I remember by the end of it, um, starting to realise I've got a problem here. Like I'm, I'm actually using a credit one of my credit cards to pay bills and stuff. Really, really bad idea. Um, and I was like, yeah, well, you know, when when we're gonna because then we're gonna get all the footage and then we've got to edit everything as well. That's probably gonna take quite a long time. And just didn't didn't think about it as a business owner. Basically, at any point, it was just kind of. It just just got carried away with the fun of the job, and it was fun. Mm-hmm. We had some great stories from just the, we're filming in bars <laughs> across the UK. We saw some shit, like you know, we saw two people having sex in a back alley in Glasgow. Yeah, well, technically correct, although I'm pretty sure it was more of a business transaction <laughs> than a than a moment of romantic love. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I he was well, the shop. Say, it was actually two animals. It was just, it was just <laughs> no, the shadows. No, it was, it was definitely two people. But as it was in a back alley in Glasgow, up against a dumpster, um, and then it's, it's the second the source, the ran away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's that's a bin, by the way, for all of our UK listeners. But it's, but it's not a bin, is it? Dumpster. It's, a, it, it's you, you need to you need to picture this. You need uh, to stop saying dumpster. Just what from, would you call it? A bin. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Getting back to Tiger Tiger, um, yeah, there was some fun bits along the way. I remember Cardiff being one of the best. Well, that's, that's, where, that's where you got two flashes, didn't you? I did. A Scotsman showed us that he definitely wasn't wearing any underwear. <laughs> that was showed sure, showed Kevy's porridge jorts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Then also, alas, 
walked up to us and pressed our nipple against the camera lens, and then walked off and, and turned around and said, ah, actually, what's this getting used for? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, going towards the end of the project, anyway, kind of fast forward and we've done all the filming, we're kind of, we're back, we're editing the project. And it was quite a lot of money tied up in the project. And um, we then started realizing that, started learning, you know, some of these bigger corporations, well, they can't just pay you. No, no, we've got payment systems. <laughs> so if you want to be paid, you have to go through the system. Mm -hmm. And our system is, we're going to delay paying you as long as possible. And that's what they did. Mm -hmm. So it, from us, chasing for the money, which is when we needed it, to being paid, ends up with me and Matthew literally standing outside of our the, the branch of our bank, um, waiting for their money to hit so that we could go into the bank and draw the money out cash. Because that was, in terms of how it cleared and everything, the quickest way to get my hands on the money so that I could then go to the various banks and pay off credit card debt mm -hmm. without kind of really hitting some problems with, with those companies. Um, and, you know, the whole experience was just gut-wrenching, obviously. And, it, and, and this is another thing. It starts to, you start, it's funny, you start to attribute these negative experiences to the work that you've produced. Mm. So if I watch a Tiger Tiger video that we did in 2007, it'll just Which conjure up, about once a week, I think. It'll conjure up memories of, you know, shagging in the back alleys of Glasgow, nipples. To and, be clear, and being paid other on. people shagging in the back alleys <laughs> of Glasgow. And this, this was Christmas Eve. That was the problem with the clearances, wasn't it? Of course, it's Christmas Eve and we're standing there in the they, bloody snow. They paid snow. by check, did they? Was that part of it? Yeah, I think it was. And I think we could only, we could only, we couldn't <laughs> move the money electronically fast enough. It needed to be cash. And, and then the branch manager comes out because it's a lot of money we we're just about to take out. So the manager takes it one side and says, it's a lot of money. How are you moving it? And also, yeah, I'm going to charge you 300 quid for drawing cash out of your business bank account. So yeah, thanks, mate. That's that's really helpful. You've earned that money, haven't you? So a lot of different experiences wrapped up in one. Mm -hmm. Most of them, you can say, well, right, well, you don't make them again. Yeah. And you've learned the hard way, which is sometimes the best way. Mm -hmm. Overall, I think it was, I'd class it as a fun experience, though. I don't think we've ever made the same mistake twice, have we? We're not that daft. Um, what, any mistake? I don't think, yeah. I don't I'm think sure so. by definition you'll, you'll make one or two. But but yeah, the big ones, the important ones. We've never been standing outside uh, HSBC on Christmas Eve. No. No, but um, even so, all that stuff at the same time, we were more reliant on getting paid from the business at that point, but we still weren't totally reliant on it. Mm -hmm. So there was that as well, but it was, uh, it was definitely the transitional period. Mm -hmm. So that was... <coughs> Very interesting, obviously, to hear. But what can you actually look back and pick one that was really fun to talk about? Because that was mixed in with fun and trepidation. Just pure fun. Pure fun. Mm. You and Gav on that golf cart? That was great. <laughs> that you, was you, great. you and Gav on the speedboat? <coughs> were, you on, were you on a speedboat? That was great, oh, too. Yeah, actually, I really enjoyed that. Well, you know, any project that would do, there's always hard work goes into it, so there's always part of it where it's, you know, not as fun. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there was just one random project where I think it was a, was it a company that used to make 3D uh, animations of golf courses so that people playing could preview, well, that, you know. That's where, one of the things they did, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was just me and Gav turning up to film on this golf course one day and the manager of the golf club looking up and down and saying, oh my God, jeans, both of you, jeans, devil's cloth. <laughs> you know, there's a no denim policy if you're not getting anything else. Devil's cloth. Devil's cloth. Good, um, good name for something like that. Band? <laughs> album, maybe? Um, so yeah, I, I can't remember how we got around that one. I think he gave well, like waders or something, way over with jeans <laughs> so that they were hidden from the members. But then he said, 
right, let's let's uh, head over to that hole, get in the golf buggy. So just driving the golf buggy around, it's just always <laughs> fun, isn't it? Uh-huh. Um, we did loads of work in factories in the early years, and some of that was actually fun, as in you just see in process, you know, like we went and filmed in the Waters Chris factory mm-hmm. and just interesting to see yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think, think I think just getting the film I think getting to go into different workspaces seeing what people do mm-hmm. seeing how things work mm-hmm. seeing how the sausage is made mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's interesting seeing behind the scenes of stuff we've been in the Nissan plant as well which was you know unreal experience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and and sometimes it makes you appreciate what you're doing <laughs> because you see other people's jobs we've also been in a, a food pr- um, prep plant where all people did from nine to five was chop onions and it was and cry and it was hell hell filming in there <laughs> and it, it was funny because you look at i'm obviously looking at matthew and he's his eyes are streaming <laughs> but then mine are squirting as well and you just you know right into the safety goggles which uh, of course uh, have got the wrap around so they're just filling up basically <laughs> so the people that work in that factory you know the best thing they've got to look forward to is visitors coming so they can laugh at them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't swap <laughs> places. <laughs> I, sp- I suppose that is one of the things like last week when we picked up a new client and we went to do some of their filming like last minute. It is like every like learning something new. I mean, it's obviously mundane to them. It's something that they do. But I suppose that's the, the, f- the fun aspect of turning up somewhere different and like, oh yeah, this is actually quite interesting for me. I didn't know about that. This looks, you know, like it was a school was filming in, and the school, obviously, well, my lad's 16 now, so it's been a while since I've been into the the, the primary school, if you like, um, and just the leaps and bounds forward. Just getting that, that on record, eh? Sco- yeah, yeah, I was allowed in. Um, the schools <laughs> have moved on, like all the tech that they've got, you know, the VR headsets, like, the way the kids are like all the outdoor activities that we've got like in this particular school it was just fantastic it was like this all the different things that they've got set up now for that and like again you know re- you recently went into one of the, f- the factories that we've been to mm-hmm. and you've got robots making robots in there and just seeing all that happen um and then because we've been with working with them for for a while seeing how they've brought a new you know systems new equipment how, how it's always changing like the even though we knew about that it's it's good to see the, the progress that they're making mm-hmm. and the different things on the on the corner so that that problem solving even when we're not out filming i mean that's that's a fun aspect for me i mean these are all this is personal i suppose um and in freelance time or the, my smaller business history like being invited out with clients when bigger companies have mm-hmm. put on like events and you've meant to feel like you're one of the team and the, the fun aspect that that brings with it mm-hmm. um kind of you you do forget because you you do so much really um, well i was going to say you know particularly in the earlier years anytime we went away to film something didn't really matter what it was but like you just had a good time because you were away for a couple of days and mm-hmm. it was a bit different and I suppose more so than being sat in the office working on the post-production side or the business admin side, that's when you felt like we're doing the thing that we're set out to do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so has anyone got any of that fuck-ups they want to share? Something that you've learned from? Yeah, but I've repeated. <laughs> I've repeated my mistakes several times. <laughs> <laughs> Still living in hope that uh, <laughs> it'll happen. Um, well, I, I suppose like I don't know if it's a fuck up. It's it's a unfortunate, unfortunate that um, through business and setting up business, I've lost two friends along the way, different businesses, um, generally over money mm-hmm. um, or ego, shall we say, um, both on the other person side. Um, so. Am I repeating history with with your film? In some respects, <laughs> time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> I'm hoping for no. <laughs> uh, but uh, you spread se- your risk now. You've got two partners. Seriously, but no. That, uh, the thing is, like, you're friends now, but you weren't friends when I joined the business. You know, that's that's so. That's kind of like that's one thing that's not in common. So 
hadn't known you previously. So a leap of faith, but I suppose that in itself is like, it's a leap of faith. So there must be something there that I've seen in the work that you're doing, the company yourselves that I've wanted to be, and put down the barriers and say, yeah, you know, fuck ups aside, fair, you know, give this give this a go again because uh, it, it's worth it and it has been, has been. Um, yeah. Well, I'm saying. sure when you joined, a lot of people would have been in your ear saying, are you sure about this? Can you trust these guys? And also, you know, having three directors as well mm -hmm. can be an awkward number. Like a lot of a lot of people in this position, there's two. It's funny um, you should say that because <clears throat> we got approached, as you know, relatively recently by someone, you know, on paper looking to buy us. And uh, what he's trying to do is build a little stable, I suppose, with a few companies in it, <clears throat> different disciplines. But... Um, it was just interesting that he said that of all the conversations he's had, we were the only one that had three equal partners mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever that's worth. Well, did uh, did anyone whisper in your ear? Because yeah. obviously there wasn't anyone yeah, there whispering in man. <laughs> well, backwards and forwards. <laughs> yeah, quite a few people. I mean, obviously we deliberately asked people what they thought. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, a lot of people brought that up. Like the, the, the number, the th three, mm -hmm. is a problem. But also... A lot of people you speak to in business have had exactly the experience you've had, which is, you know, it, it's a very difficult relationship having a business partner. And um, me and Matthew were friends before we started. I mean, literally at school, <laughs> yeah. school friends. Yeah. And um, we're still friends now. I, it, I wonder, if you've, <laughs> you've come in and become friends, we've just slowly drifted from it. But you know, that's all balanced out, hasn't it? That's why I wanted you in, Mark, so he had a friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, it's tough though, because I suppose it's um, it's what real friendship is. It's, it's being able to have the difficult conversations when things aren't going well. You've got to be able to have those conversations which we have, and now you have also been party to, and mm -hmm. you have to, you know, let that happen, otherwise it just doesn't work, and stuff builds up, and, it, and then it ends up going the way quite a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people we were speaking to actually had gone through experiences similar to yours, where they'd had a business partner and it hadn't worked out, and, and you know, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about that. Just when it, when it comes to the crunch, there's just, you're just gonna have different ideas of how things should go. We know people that have had similar experiences and they've actually parted ways amicably. Mm -hmm. And obviously the other side where it isn't. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah. I think it was it was good that you were the the caution you had when you came on board was good and, and right. And you know, that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Same from our side. So Yeah, so even though <laughs> jokingly I said it's like history repeating itself it, learnt along the way like you've just said there so a little bit more cautious but you know these these things can happen mm -hmm. um, but you, you adapt and you learn from it so so now he has the really hard question mark no there hasn't been <laughs> <laughs> any fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> well do you want to think about that for a minute whilst Matthew uh, tells what his, his well, most well when, when you say fun experience. do you mean like on my trajectory or with your film? I don't think anything. Anything? Yeah. Anything, yeah. Still not. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Matthew. What's the question? What was my most fun? Yeah, well, when, when I was saying mine, I suppose they were more related to production. And, um, I mean, that that's something we haven't touched on. I think we might have mentioned it in podcasts before, but there was a, a point in time where me and Matthew both, both basically did the same job for the business. We both or business development, or both sales, or both editing and, and everything. And you know, when Do you, you know how we decided who did the editing on any given day? This Rock, is embarrassing. Pa paper, scissors? This no, is no. embarrassing. No, no, no. No, that's a system. No system. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had an editing PC and an admin PC. Depending on who got in the office first, you chose where you sat. Good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that's going. That is embarrassing, but that is going weird. Is, is that as that as embarrassing as talking about how we didn't work out how to use that edit system for about a year after? Calm down, it? Matthew. Calm <laughs> down. <laughs> we did. We, we did know how to use it. We just 
didn't use it with its full capabilities <laughs> for a few years. That's yeah, we used we used it in like low power mode for the first year and a bit, and then we're like, oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the, the experiences I was talking about that I enjoyed are production related. So, obviously, at whatever point it was, what year it was, we were we split with roles, and I went more on the creative side. Matthew's more on the MD and business yeah. development side. Is there anything related to that side of your job? I mean, there's a there's the buzz of the sale, Matthew. <laughs> well, let's give you the biggest buzz. Ah, as you know, okay, this old heart of mine's been broke a thousand <laughs> times. The buzz just doesn't doesn't buzz as much as it yeah, used Matthew's to. Matthew's definitely got the thickest skin. <laughs> it does. I mean, that is one of the kind of the fun side side of it, like th- that buzz of like driving away from a meeting. I've had that numerous times actually. Um, driving away, thinking, yeah, they've listened. Um, we can do a great job. You know. We've, won this you know um numerous obviously when you're self-employed and you're doing that it's like um but yeah that is like a high it is a natural high i think well i'm not trying to be funny but yeah in in line with what kev said it's been many years since you've really since i've really felt like the swings of that because how how do you get up and try and close new business every day if you're kind of like living and dying by every you know, rejection, because you're going to get more rejections than wins, aren't you? So yes, there's definitely projects and clients that we've won where, uh, I'm talking about in the last few years, where it's either a sizable project or just a good client name, you know, where you're like, oh, like that, that that's exciting. So there's definitely been that. But um, it's not it's not really one specific win. It's more just like the ability in the last few years to think, oh, well, we'll, we'll build something to a point where it's solid and dependable and people can be employed by it and rely on it and you know like the, the kind of gradual like the, there is it's not like one moment of it but there is some fun in that to look mm-hmm. like to, to see things grow which is always good <coughs> the um <laughs> the, the first thing that came to mind is like off the top of my head is the most fun thing though was actually production albeit quite personal to me in the um the project where I ended up filming it in America hmm. and <clears throat> we're filming this prototype product and basically I had I had booked a holiday to America hmm. to go and stay with Devon and then out of the blue we got a call saying oh do you want to do this project and, the, and the project had previously been mentioned a few months before and it was going to be filmed in Miami when it came back around it was going to be filmed in the Chesapeake Bay which was like two hours drive south of where I was going to be anyway. And the dates they wanted to film it lined up with the last couple of days of the holiday. So it was already good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was kind of getting paid to go on holiday at that point. But then because it was a prototype, they kept like having to mess around with it and it wasn't working. So they kept pushing the filming date back. So I ended up staying an extra three, four weeks or something, mm-hmm. waiting for them to film it. Which during that time I was then, you know, getting in contact with, local agencies and things and I was doing meetings and stuff and trying to like just see what that was like and obviously on a personal level that was good but just it was a fun thing to film mm. it was probably the last thing it's over 10 years ago that must be the last thing I filmed on my own literally filmed on my own Matthew left a little easter egg in the footage from that project did I? yeah what was he it? did no offence Mark <laughs> hang on but at the time the, we're doing a lot of filming for a client um <coughs> A, a, a big bakery in Hull. Oh, yeah. You probably know who I'm referring to there. Multiple projects for them. So uh, never away from Hull for a, a year or two. And Matthew, whilst he's filming this project, turned the camera on himself and said, don't worry, lads, I'll do all the hard projects. <laughs> Haven't you just got some filming in Hull to do? <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah you did. I know you did. <laughs> and, that, and that's why I've never been allowed to film a project on my own since. <coughs> so that was fun. Uh-huh. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah, you've had your fun over the years. Yeah, yeah. I've got pictures of some of it. You, oh yeah. You and the award. <laughs> Knee <laughs> pants, but an award. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely had some fun along the way. Um, I don't know how long we've been going, lads, but should we start wrapping this one up? Mark still hasn't thought of his fun yet. We've got to, we've got to squeeze some fun out of him, and then we can wrap it up. Well, it, <laughs> it's just 
It's no, there's no pressure, Mark. <laughs> there's no pressure. You can just say you haven't had fun. <laughs> I probably have. I just, I just don't remember it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give you another one, right? The, the, again, something that obviously over time dissipates a little bit, but the first few times we made tallyards and just seeing it on TV, oh, yeah. mm. uh-huh, uh-huh. like that's just a buzz. Yeah, that, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, <clears throat> well, it was all that one was doing. Uh, promos were back for satellite channel, like seeing all that. But I think the more we did it, it just becomes the norm, and maybe maybe that that's kind of it takes the shine off it a little bit. Like say, thinking back of like, yeah, it was great. Came up with a great idea. It was on TV. Everyone could see it. Um, it was in that moment that it was like it was fun, um, and luckily. You know, we've got other TV ads coming up now, and I think that you know it resurfaces, doesn't it, when you're on that on set filming mm-hmm. and waiting to see it and doing the next big thing. And well, well, I suppose in line with what I was just saying, on more on the sales side of things, we've had a, a client run a TV campaign in the last few weeks, and we're going to go and see them in a couple of weeks' time to kind of do a you know a wrap up on how things have gone and talk mm-hmm. about next mm-hmm. steps. But mm-hmm. they sent a message yesterday to say we're really happy with the results, so. We'll find out exactly what the results are, but you know that <coughs> the the buzz of seeing the thing, oh, we made that on TV, has probably been replaced, rightly so, arguably, by ah, that's really worked for the client. So that's no matter what happens going forward, just the fact that we did a thing based on you know what we've learned and mm-hmm. it's worked and and got them the result that they want, fantastic. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, it's easy to uh, your baselines just change. Yeah. I know I've said this to you quite a few times, but when we, um, it was a Northern Film and Media open evening at the Horror Channel in Bill Key that me and Matthew attended. And at the time you worked for the Horror Channel. And I was I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. This is the <laughs> coolest place ever. I would do anything to work here. Uh-huh. I, just, I, I just love it. Absolutely love it. Um, but for you, you at that point, there, eh? <laughs> for you at that point, you were like, nah, it's normal. This <laughs> for him at that point, he's like, why am I still here at nine o'clock at night on a yeah, Tuesday? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's it. No, I mean, it's, I suppose that's it. It's kind of you don't know what's going on at the surface, really, dear. There was a lot of um, actually that event met a few people there. There was a lot of upheaval going on at the time. Yeah, there's a lot of fires being fought at that that time. Yeah, um, and you're like, oh. This is lovely. I'd love to work here. And yeah. it's like, yeah. Well, that's don't, the thing. Don't yeah. open that door. You weren't really <laughs> part of the tour. You were just there working yeah. as we got to, taken around to see what was meant to be an empty room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What are these guys doing here? <laughs> the main point, uh, one thing, takeaway is like, from all the fuck ups that I've experienced and, and been part of through my own fault or no fault of my own is the main thing is never never back yourself into a corner never never put yourself without an, a, another plan a safety net or anything like that because if you've got a safety net you're fine if you haven't that's when that's when it's going to be a major problem mm-hmm. so all the fun and the fuck ups aside that's that's one rule of thumb that I've stuck to it's a good way to end if we all give one rule of thumb so Marx is uh, don't Back yourself into a corner. Don't leave yourself without um, another avenue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, you know, if you've got if you've got one thing on the table, if you've got to walk into that meeting and seal that deal, and that's you've got to do that to pay your mortgage, keep you safe. Like the person in the strongest position is the person that can walk away from it. Mm-hmm. So if you're going in there and you've got no no avenue, you're you know that's going to be detrimental to you. You, you need options. Mm. Um, you got one, Matthew. Got one in the chamber. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, it's not like I sit and you know chant this to myself as a mantra every morning or anything. But I think the the, the primary thing that I've learned in the eighteen years is there's very very rarely any genuine reason to panic about anything because no matter how bad thing like you know like it's when things are bad it's usually related to money like you were talking about before there's usually some issue 
which quite often is to do with a client not paying on time or just not paying at all and all that kind of stuff. And like time's proven over and over again, there's, there's always a route forward. There's always, you know, yes, there's anxiety around it and it's natural to feel a bit panicked, but, you know, history has proven at this point over and over that if you keep doing the right things, it works out. Mm-hmm. So un- unfortunately, that does translate a little bit into like, you know, you kind of, I think the edges are rounded off a little bit on on the highs by the same by the same token, but you know it's uh, keeps you sane. I think. Mm-hmm. Before you answer that, I've said something that I'm, I'm not sure what it means, but I've said it. What's rule of thumb? <laughs> <laughs> What's it uh, pertain I to? believe it means <coughs> a, a rule that uh, pertains to so, most situations in life. But where does it come from? Mr. Where's it come from? Mr. Thumb. <laughs> well, look, you know, people can Google that in their own time. <laughs> what's your rule I don't of... Know. Kevin. Um, <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> what's your rule of index finger? <laughs> um, mm, I think um, it would probably be related to the Tiger Tiger problem that we had, which was if we had asked for any kind of deposit up front it would have made the whole thing a lot easier it's it's a pretty bland bit of advice like but i think it kind of it works across any industry that you that you're working in which is i just think it deposits more than just you know getting a bit of cash that's going to see you through it does that but it's also just firm commitment from a supplier because that's the thing you know especially when you're freelancing people do take a lend quite a lot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Of, of, and, and don't value your time oh, yeah. people don't value your time until you start making them value your time mm-hmm. and um, getting people to put money where their mouth is up front I think can uh, help help clarify things and also it might help you get rid of people that aren't serious as well mm-hmm. oh, definitely yeah, yeah. To, to be fair I, I my recollection of that was maybe we didn't charge a deposit per se, but we charged something during the course of the project. The problem was part of a bigger problem, which was we weren't properly business minded yet. We were still in the, you know, we didn't really know how long things took. We knew how long it would take us to do things, but we didn't know enough, have enough experience to factor in you know, the delays that come from the client side, which are not like deliberate delays, but like Mm -hmm. just scheduling things and all the rest of it, that that makes the project take longer than it should take. And then um, just, you all right? (laughs) 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 Do we wait for that to finish or is it still going in? It's, oh, um, Oh, I Someone's flushed a toilet somewhere above. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it, for a mix of reasons, inexperience, age, personality, the fact that we weren't totally reliant on the business to pay away, all that, all those things together and more, mm-hmm. we were basically too nice for too long. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, obviously, obviously we've learned that lesson and turned it into a right pair of bastards now, but mm-hmm. it's, um, it, it, it's all the same thing, isn't it? It's like just, mm-hmm. that's, that's, or to put it another way, we, we've... Um, We've learned to value ourselves in a way that we didn't didn't know that we didn't know how to do that at that point. Yeah, an unknown unknown. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it uh, definitely. If you if you don't value your time, no one else will. Mm. And yeah, being too nice just lets people take a lend. Yeah, yeah. So get nasty. Oh, and on that, that note, <laughs> let's, let's end that there. Yeah. I'll get nasty. There's, there's a better title. Just get nasty. <laughs> not the next thing. No, it's been interesting. I've heard, you know, some stuff st- from yourselves that I've heard before, but new, new things as well. It's, um, it's been interesting. Good. Well, tune it's been, in. It's been, tune in. It'll be out next week. <laughs> it's, it's been fun. Has it? Hey. This was it. Hey. There you go. We got one. Uh, Just squeaked in at the end there. Uh, well done. Well, thank you for watching or listening to this podcast. We appreciate it. Um, Matthew's now become a dab hand at the uh, the outros for these things. So we'll let Mark do it. I thought he was going to say he's become a dad. 
<laughs> well, I know we've been I know we've been recording a while, but uh, not quite that long. No, <laughs> it just fades out. But yeah, no, over to you, Matthew. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, cheers, pals. Well, you know, remember to smash that like and subscribe button. That's it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really appreciate you watching and listening to this. So if you could like it, subscribe it, tell tell your tell your mom, tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, much just just put it on random TVs when you go to other people's houses. Just let it play. Yeah. So. Thank you and goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye.